Hey, how you doing guys? My name is Derek and today we're going to talk a little bit about these emission readiness monitors. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I always get this question. Um, people always ask, how many miles do I need to drive for these emission readiness monitors to complete? Um, you, know, you know, they ask me, you know, you know, I've driven 200 miles, how many miles more do I need to go? Um, you know, I've driven it for a week, I've driven it for two weeks, driven it for three weeks, and I still have either one or two readiness monitors that have not, um, that have not set. Um, let me tell you this, guys, the, the, the answer, first of all, you're asking the wrong question. Uh, the computer doesn't need to see miles. It needs to see certain conditions. So, for example, it needs to see, you know, the outside temperature, you know, above a certain temp. Um, it needs to see that the engine temperature has warmed up from, you know, like from a cold start all the way down, um, you know, below a certain threshold. And then, it, you know, a full warm up cycle. And maybe you'll need to see that full warm up cycle two, three, four times before it'll actually run one of these readiness monitors. Um, it needs to see the engine idling for a, a certain period of time. It needs to see, you know, driving on the freeway for a certain period of time. And as you're driving, what happens is the computer is always trying to run these tests. If these readiness, readiness monitors have not been run as of yet, um, either because the battery was disconnected, there was, you know, somebody had cleared, cleared the codes out of the computer, erased the, 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 the vehicle's memory. Um, and what happens is um, everything will just go to incomplete or, or not ready. Um, so what you got to do is you got to, you got to, you got to get out there and you got to drive it. And as the vehicle is, is being driven down the road, it will automatically start to run these tests or it'll try to run these tests. Um, and you know, first of all, I'm not an engineer. I'm not that smart. I didn't write the software for these computers. So from what I understand, you know, the, the, the different make and model or the manufacturers, you know, the, the tests are going to vary a little bit, um, you know, from Honda, Ford, GM, Chrysler, Toyota, stuff like that, that, um, you know, they're going to need to see certain things a little bit differently, you know, so just because one ran, you know, on a, on a, on a GM doesn't mean it's going to be the same for a Toyota or, or, or whatever the case is. And even, and even if it's, even if it's a GM, um, you know, it could be, it could be, a different you know from a couple different years it could be different different run cycles so um anyway so i did get i did print this off and i got i got i got some notes here i'm going to read this to you this is i'm going to give you an example and then i'm going to we're going to dive into the scan tool here this code reader uh and i'm going to show you uh, a couple things that i would recommend that you look for if you're having an issue with uh you're writing this monitors um or if they're not running what you can look for so here's an example that I came across not too long ago. So a 2005 Pontiac Vibe, this also goes, um, it also applies to a 2005 Toyota Matrix with a 1.8 liter engine. So um, the customer's concern is that it's not passing uh, emissions because the emission monitors are not running. So here are some of the test procedures that, that, that I have found. That's my scan tool dinging over there. We're gonna go take a look at that in a moment. Um, so here's what I have for these drive cycles uh, that you need to, you, that the vehicle, the, the vehicle's computer needs to see for these, these conditions to be met in order for these, these monitors to run. Um, and again, it's not miles, because everybody asked me that question, how many miles do I need to drive? It's not how many miles, it's conditions. All right, so, and if, again, if you run these, if you run this, um, you go ahead and run these, um, these drive cycles and it's still not running these monitors still aren't running um, usually you didn't do them properly the conditions weren't met but even if you did do them properly sometimes if you have a skewed sensor you know or like an engine coolant temperature sensor a skewed mass airflow sensor or an oxygen sensor that's a little bit lazy maybe it have it hasn't set a code in the computer so you think it's fine but then the computer will actually it won't it won't run that test because the sensor is not working perfectly um so and, and again there's there's several degrees there um 
again, I'm not an engineer. I didn't write the software, but that's, I'm just telling you based on my experience from, from what I understand. So anyway, let me read this to you real quick. 2005 Pontiac Vibe with a 1.8 and a 2005 Toyota Matrix with a 1.8. The customer's concerned it's not passing the emission, uh, the emission monitors aren't running. So here, here's what it says. The conditions that need to be met in order for these monitors to run, all right, are number one, verify there's no trouble codes, current trouble codes, history or pending codes stored in the computer. Okay, so, so it, no codes can be in the computer. And then the barometric pressure is more than 75 kPa or 22 inches of mercury. Um, the engine coolant temperature sensor is below 24 degrees Celsius or 75 deg degrees Fahrenheit. The battery voltage is between 10.5 and 16 volts. The fuel level is between a quarter tank and three quarters of a tank. That's another thing, guys. A lot of people, they're either their tanks on <laughs> they're all the way full or all the way empty, and they're like, I can't get this these monitors to run. Well, or if you have a bad fuel level sensor or sender, sorry, in your in your fuel tank, yes, it can affect if the computer doesn't see, you know, we just read a quarter between a quarter and three quarters, it'll affect the, the readiness monitors. All right. Um, so step number two, set the vehicle parking brake. Now I've never had to do that. <laughs> That's just what I found here. <laughs> um, idle the engine until the, idle the engine until the engine reaches an operating temperature of at least 158 degrees Fahrenheit. This may be up to eight to 10 minutes, depending on the start, the startup temperature. So if you have a bad thermos, think about this, guys. If you have a bad thermostat and it takes a long time for the engine to warm up, or again, if you have a bad engine coolant temperature sensor and it's, the computer is not seeing these parameters, it's not going to run. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Step number four, acceleration. At Accelerate. It says acceleration, but we're going to change it. Acceleration. Accelerate at part throttle to 45 to 55 miles an hour. Speed maintained for four minutes or until the IM system status indi indicate updates to yes. Step five, deacceleration or deaccelerate um, to zero. Engine idling for two minutes. I'm gonna turn the engine off here. Engine idling for two minutes while the following criteria is maintained. Um, and this is what it says. Service brake depressed. Automatic transmission in drive. Manual transmission in neutral with the clutch pedal depressed. Step number six. Accelerate at part throttle 56 to 90 kilometers an hour or 45 to 55 miles per hour, speed maintained for four minutes or until the, the emission, the IM system status indicator updates to yes. All right, and, and again, verify there's no current codes, history codes, or pending codes. Um, and then once everything's done completely and accurately, all the monitors should run. And again, this is this is just an example, guys. This doesn't apply to every vehicle out there. What I have here is this is a 2005 Pontiac Vibe, 2005 Toyota Matrix with a 1.8 liter engine. Um, so there you have it. So my point is, it's not miles; it's certain conditions. All right. So and every vehicle will be a little bit different. Now, usually, if once the the vehicles. Um, computer has been cleared you know with a scan tool or if the you know the computer lost battery power for any reason you know usually when you start it up and you just start driving within a few days or even a lot sooner maybe even a couple hours all these these readiness monitors will go ready um they they will go to complete and you can just you can just run it in there but but I, again i do get this question quite a bit 
So, you know, what do I got to do to make these to make these um, these readiness monitors run? So um, that was an example, and I just wanted to show you this, guys. <clears throat> so real quick, we're going to hop in here. We're going to pull up my scan tool, and I'm going to show you some parameters um, that I think you need to look at. Um, I think this will be important. All right, so let's get right into it. All right, guys. I got the Foxwell NT204 plugged into the data link connector. The key is turned on. We are communicating with the vehicle. We have live data right now. Um, now, if you look close... Right up on top, DTC count zero, so there's no diagnostic trouble codes. Um, sorry. ECT, that's your engine coolant temperature, 203 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so again, remember what we just talked about? The computer needs to see the correct engine coolant temperature reading. So if for some reason, your vehicle is not passing emissions and these readiness monitors are not running, you may want to pick up a code reader or, or a scan tool and view live data and take a look at some of these parameters. So again, this is the engine coolant temperature sensor reading. Um, we talked about a couple other ones here. Let me scroll down, I'll show you. Engine RPM. Um, now that's actually a really good parameter if you're diagnosing a no start. So for example, if you have a bad cam sensor or crank sensor and you're, you know, the engine doesn't have any spark. If you're cranking it over, you can clearly hear the engine's cranking and, and it continues to show zero on your on your live data under engine RPM. Well, you, you could have a bad cam or crank sensor depending on depending on the engine. Um, it's not used for emissions, but I just wanted to just wanted to show you that. Um, yes, and yes, by the way, guys, on some vehicles, the cam sensor is used to generate spark. So not all vehicles, but depending on the application. Um, you can, here's your vehicle speed. Um, your intake air temperature sensor. Here's another one, too, guys. Your computer's going to need to see this. Here's an important one. Um, again, depending on the application different vehicles different manufacturers you know look at different things your mass airflow sensor key on engine off it's not running so we're at zero which is okay throttle position percentage um, oh here's another good one guys o2 sensor bank one sensor two volts um oh that's the voltage let me go back up to your i think it was fuel trims here here it is Short-term fuel trim and long-term fuel trims. Why is this important? If the fuel trims are skewed in one way or another, the computer may not run these readiness monitors. If there's either a fuel delivery problem, maybe an ignition system issue, or maybe something else is going on, a mechanical issue, you know, if valve timing is off or something like that, something is affecting these fuel trims and the computer just doesn't like what it sees, it may not run these readiness monitors. So uh, keep that in mind, guys, and you can see them right here, short term, right there, and long term, right there. Okay. Um, I believe the rule of thumb is plus or minus either 7% or 10%. Mm, this one's, the long term on this one is six, so we're good. Uh, now where was I? Scroll down here. There was, uh, I want to show you the barometric pressure. Here it is. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, guys, here's your EVAP. Sorry, here's your EVAP. I, EVAP percent, I believe that might be your purge control valve. I, I could be wrong, but I'd have to do some digging on that one so that you can. That's another parameter that will help you diagnose if you got an EVAP code, which is, by the way, very common with Toyotas. All right, so the barometric pressure, we did talk about this earlier. The computer does need to see the correct barometric pressure in order to run these emission readiness um, monitors. So I would think if this is off, I would think your, your engine would run pretty rough. Um, but again, it's just something that just something just to check.
cat temp. Seven, wow, 700 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's pretty hot. And we're just, we were just sitting here idling for a little bit. So I, I guess if you have a, you know, if, if you're, you've got any emissions issue and you could keep getting a cat code. Um, back in the day, we used to just take a temperature gun and, and measure um, temperature in and out of that converter. And from what I understood and the way, the way we did it, we went on 100 degrees hotter going out than going in. That means the converter is lighting off, um, and that means the converter is working. So the hotter it burns, the cleaner it burns. Uh, so keep that in mind. If, and, and if it was if it was the same temperature or less going out than coming in, then your converter is dead. So it's like a converter code. Uh, your load. Um, I suppose that's for the EBS. That doesn't affect emissions. EVAP. EVAP pressure. I believe that's. That the PSI it doesn't look familiar. That's barometric pressure. Um, so if you're doing something with you know with the EVAP system and you need to, to diagnose it, and you can pull up that parameter. Accelerator pedal position sensor. There it is. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show you this, guys. This is uh, live data from your vehicle's computer using the Foxwell NT204. If you guys are having an issue with your readiness monitors not setting, um, you may want to pick up either this scan tool or another one. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. You know, it doesn't have to be this one. Um, as long as you can access the live data and it, you know, it gives you the correct information, that's all that matters. And once you're in here, you can take a look at all these individual parameters and hopefully that'll help you figure out what in the world is going on and why these readiness monitors are not setting. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to use the Foxwell NT204. You can read codes, you can clear codes, you can read live data, which can help with a ton of things. Any, anywhere from um, diagnosing, diagnostic purposes, to um, checking individual um, parameters to figure out why your, your vehicle's not uh, setting these, these readiness monitors for emission purposes. So, but anyway, Thanks for watching. I'm going to put a link below for um, for you. If, if, if you have a vehicle that's not, the emission readiness monitors are not setting, you can click on the link below. It will take you over to Just Answer, and we can, we can send you a, a good, um, accurate drive cycle for what you need for your specific vehicle. Um, and also link uh, to this Foxwell scan tool below for you as well. So anyway, so thanks for watching.